this isn't me talking. This is just the truth. There is still at mainstream radio an enormous bias against 80s acts for airplay. There is no place for it to go outside of specialty programming. There is just no place to bring it. General classic rock radio will not play it. And active or modern rock radio, if you will, whatever you want to call it, will not touch it either because they're older dudes. <laughs> and that's a young man's world. And there is still a bias against the dreaded 80s hair bands, which is why, again, I hate that term. It feeds into the bias. So 99% of these records that come out from bands far bigger than the guys in Dokken from the 80s are over a week after they come out. The whole model for selling it is on its head. The push is to get it first week sales and to push towards pre-orders and all that, and then talk about where it is on the charts the first week it came out, and week three, it's off charts. It's not even talked about. And when you have a band that is essentially a side project, the odds go a thousand times higher. Hell, look at the new White Snake record. Here I go again as in a Geico commercial on every five minutes on TV. White Snake, major name band, right? Is that record blowing up rock radio anywhere? They got a brand new record out. It's a real good record. That's White Snake. It's everywhere. It's impossible to get that stuff played in a real way and sold in a real way. And then if you throw into the equation a part-time band put together by a bunch of guys whose priorities are in way other places, because let's be honest, everybody is going to go to where they their bread is buttered and where they make the most money. I can't blame them. You don't stand a chance. And it doesn't matter. This isn't about whether the band is good or not. Nothing to do with that. It is the way the business is set up now. Just about every record, you get about a one-week shelf life, and most people are on to the next, including the people who made the record themselves. Now, that being said... I spoke to George Lynch on my show on volume last week. If you missed it, it's on the Sirius XM app. And I'm also going to put it as my podcast this coming Thursday. Just talked to George last week. We talked about KXM. We talked about the end machine. We talked about Lynch mob. We talked about Dokken. Because I'll be seeing George on Saturday with Lynch mob in Tulsa at the IDL Ballroom, a show that I am hosting there. And George said he would love to do more dates with the end machine. But again, same problem he has with KXM, which is Ray Luzier and Doug Pinnock. Can't be two, three places at once. And everybody is going to take dates with the bands that do the best business for them. And I can give you a million examples of, of, of that happening with these sort of assembled supergroups. So you, the odds are stacked tremendously against you anyway, just because of how you're perceived. And then when you throw on top of that equation, sideband, independent record label, um, no commitment to live shows. 
you get about a week shelf life. All that being said, I love these bands, I love these records, and I'll always feature them when I can. So with that, how about we get back into music for a bit? You can continue to hold if you'd like. I'll get more calls in about 20 to 30 minutes, but we'll play a bunch of tunes for you right now. Niall in California. Hi, Niall. Hey, Eddie. It's Lyle in oh. Calabasas. Hey, Lyle. Sorry and about that. You, hey, it, it, your, your screener's having a, a good old time. But uh, anyway, let me just say you are the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> the one you. and only Eddie Trunk. And so anyway, uh, I hope you know who I am now. But uh, anyway, I just want to say that I saw the Winery Dogs on Friday, uh, the last show of their little tour. And I've got to say, talking about bands that you know have a million side projects going on, that those guys just put it out there. 100%, no, I take it back, 150% uh, every night. Um, they write great songs, and, uh, you know, and if it wasn't for uh, social media, you'd never know, you know, what they were doing. Unless, well, of course, you you are probably, like, the only one that, that uh, does any kind of pr uh, promotion. But anyway, I got to say that, you know, um, that they're, they're just the best, and uh, I'm really excited that they announced that they're, you know, written some new music, they're going to do a new album, and uh, there's going to be a tour that's going to follow. Well, what they said, what they said, Lyle, was that they are going to try to clear all their schedules to make a yeah. record and tour again somewhere in the near future. When that's going to yeah, happen, right. though, is anyone's guess. But the good news yeah, is, course, yeah. yeah, what what this month of dates did for the Winery Dogs was to reinforce to everyone that the band is still something that the three members want to do. It, they, that those guys do all get along. They do enjoy playing with each other, but they also are a band made up of three guys who very much are multitaskers. And the oh, yeah. and the ultimate. Thank you, Lyle, for the call. The ultimate multitasker in Portnoy, who is now in six bands, and Sheehan, who is in a couple of the other bands that Portnoy's in. And then Richie, who likes doing his solo career and is headed to Europe to do it. So it really comes down to commitment. It really comes down to, for all of these bands, we had somebody call in earlier tonight about the end machine and why don't they do anything. These guys are all going to go and gravitate towards their comfort zones, towards the corners and the places where they make the most money or have the most personal enjoyment. And for for a lot of them, it's uh, you know the thing that they th that they're most comfortable doing, whether it be solo or whatever band or whatever money or whatever opportunity is out there. And some of them juggle it, and some of it, well, we just did a record in two shows, and that's it. We're moving on to the next. But the good news is, if you're a fan of of the Winery Dogs, as I certainly am is the fact that they proved that they are going to continue to work this band and continue to keep this as part of what all three of them do. And the vibes were great coming off of this run of dates, and hopefully it does lead to something sooner than later uh, in terms of, of more recording and playing live. And by the way, just confirmed seconds ago to our previous caller about HEAT, or a I think it's H-E-A-T, because there's a period after every one of their initials. But they are indeed on Monsters of Rock Cruise 2020. So get your cabins, and you can see your boys on the high seas on what is the cruise of a lifetime. So much fun, and it'll be here before you know it. So get online and check that out. But those are, I, I talk about this all the time. When we get calls for bands like that, and so many others, I mean, look at the list of bands that Monsters of Rock Cruise has already announced for next year. The great majority of them, if I'm just if just being brutally honest, could not and would not really be able to tour in America because there's just not enough of a base to support touring. But on a cruise like that, that is a great opportunity to see those bands and so many others, and of course, bigger bands and smaller bands and discover new things because the, the whole event isn't built around just one band, like a club show would be on a Tuesday night somewhere. So that is what really, you know, where something like the Monsters of Rock Cruise or, 
or some of these festivals or destination things become really important if you want to see some of those bands play live in the U.S. Hope to see you on board. It looks like Heat or H-E-A-T will be on the 2020 Monsters of Rock Cruise.